This video is brought to you by our new show, The Daily Briefing. That's the show where we go through the five most important news stories each day, giving you a rundown of everything you need to know around the world in a matter of minutes. Watch on the separate TLDR Daily YouTube channel or listen by searching in your favorite podcast app. In just a few days, France will once again head to the ballot box for the second round of their presidential election between incumbent Emmanuel Macron and Marine Le Pen. While polling currently suggests that Macron has roughly a 10-point lead, the election has proved to be way closer than many analysts would have expected, with polls from late May putting Le Pen neck to neck with Macron. So it seems that a Le Pen victory is still possible. So in this video, we thought we'd take a look at what a Le Pen presidency would actually look like, as unthinkable as that might once have been. Let's start with Le Pen's manifesto. The plan mostly focuses on mitigating the cost of living crisis. But perhaps surprisingly for Le Pen, it takes a characteristically left-wing approach to actually achieve this. For example, Le Pen wants to decrease the price of gas and electricity by cutting VAT from 20% to 5 Even more radically, Le Pen plans to nationalise the highways and decrease tolls, since large proportions of the French road system are currently privately owned. Le Pen's energy policies also include investing in nuclear, hydroelectric and hydrogen power, but she also wants to dismantle existing wind farms and scrap government support for wind and solar projects. Le Pen also wants to protect French agriculture by increasing consumption of domestic agricultural products through quotas and regulations. In addition to this, small businesses are set to receive preferential treatment by the government when handing out public contracts, as well as some level of protection from foreign competition. Le Pen's manifesto also includes an interesting pro-youth policy package. By eliminating all income tax and corporate tax for people under 30 years of age, Le Pen hopes to make sure that young people stay and live in France instead of moving abroad. Furthermore, young families are set to receive generous loans and other new benefits in order to improve the birth rate of the country. Families from lower income brackets will also be exempt from paying inheritance tax, and Le Pen plans to reduce the pension age for those who began work before the age of 20 from 62 to 20, which stands in stark contrast to Macron's efforts to gradually increase the retirement age from 62 to 65. Although Macron has since rode back on this promise, saying that he'd reconsider the plans if the French public deemed them to be unacceptable. Le Pen has also pledged to invest 20 billion euros to increase access to healthcare and build 100,000 additional units of social housing. And while much of this might sound lovely, Le Pen is not entirely clear on how she's actually going to be able to afford these generous policies. It's hard to increase investment and spending while you're simultaneously cutting taxes and reducing the pension age. Le Pen claims that she could pay for it by cutting back on government waste and benefit programs, but analysis that's been conducted estimates that all of this would end up costing some 100 billion euros annually, more than seven times the 13 billion euros that Le Pen quoted. While Le Pen's economic platform might be fairly described as left-wing, her security policies are pretty right-wing. These include ceasing the issuance of family reunion visas, revoking visas for unemployed migrants, and systemically deporting all that came in illegally or have a criminal record. Le Pen also wants to change citizenship rules and limit social welfare to only those who have worked in France for at least five years, as well as banning Muslim headscarves and halal ritual slaughter of animals and introduce harsher sentencing for violent and sexual offences, together with a legally enshrined right to self-defence with the aim of reducing criminality. Now, it's worth saying that Le Pen would struggle to implement these policies. France is a semi-presidential republic, meaning that while presidents do have strong powers, they are still limited by the National Assembly. In fact, it's still the Prime Minister who heads the government and oversees the domestic affairs of France. 
So, unless Le Pen's win is followed by a strong performance of her national rally in the upcoming legislative elections, it looks likely that she'll be forced into what's called cohabitation with a prime minister from another party. And while her cost of living measures might find widespread support in the assembly, her more radical social and security policies are unlikely to get anywhere. That's because her only likely ally here would be Zamor's reconquest party. But given his underwhelming performance in the presidential election, the party looks unlikely to win many seats in the parliament. However, while the assembly might be able to limit Le Pen's domestic policy platform, she'd have pretty much free reign when it comes to foreign policy. A Le Pen victory would without a doubt send shockwaves throughout the EU. Le Pen's EU policy has softened over time. In 2012, she wanted to leave the EU altogether. In 2017, she wanted to stay but leave the euro. Today, though, she wants to just reform the EU from within, transforming it into a looser alliance of, quote, free and sovereign nations, putting a halt to further enlargement. But even if she has toned down her approach to the EU somewhat, a Le Pen presidency will still prove deeply disruptive to the EU, not least because France currently holds the EU Council presidency. Le Pen has also said that she would unilaterally exit the EU's Green Deal, which is designed to make the EU carbon neutral by 2050, as well as leaving the EU's energy market and the Schengen area. Le Pen would also undermine the EU's unity on Putin's invasion, with her recently arguing against energy sanctions and heavy arms deliveries to Ukraine. France's defence and external security framework would also shift dramatically. Le Pen would pull out of NATO's integrated military command, upending the current defence infrastructure of Europe and rendering any dreams of an EU army completely void. Le Pen has also said that she'd like to see an early rapprochement with Russia once the war in Ukraine is over, arguing that Europe needs Russia on side to confront the threat of China. And since France has the largest military and diplomatic power out of anyone in the EU, the likelihood of France negotiating peace talks with Putin at the expense of Ukrainian territorial integrity would be significantly increased if Le Pen was in power. You get the idea though. While Le Pen's domestic policies might be moderated by the French Assembly, her foreign policy would undermine both NATO and the EU, which would undeniably amount to a massive win for Putin even if it is what the French electorate end up voting for. Regardless, if you want to be updated on this story, how the French election plays out, then be sure to check out the Daily Briefing. That's our new daily show, where we explain five news stories every single day. We pick out the big stories, the ones you ought to know about, but we also choose some smaller ones that you might otherwise miss. So if you want to be better informed about the world around you and news from all over the globe, then you really ought to subscribe. And it's only a few minutes each day, so what do you have to lose? We post a video version every weekday over on the TLDR Daily channel, so you can subscribe over there. Or you can listen along to the podcast by searching for the TLDR Daily Briefing in your favourite podcast app. Thanks for your support, and I hope you enjoy the new show.